Thank you for joining me. And today we're wondering why are you investing and what should your strategy be? A lot of that depends on why you're investing and what your long-term goals are. So if your long-term goals are just retirement, then you should obviously invest in a 401k and um, max that out because it's likely going to be the second best bang for your buck. All the money going into your 401k is before taxes. So for every, let's say you're in the 22% uh, tax bracket. So for every $78 that you would get into your bank account from your paycheck, you can invest $100 into your 401k. So first of all, obviously always get the match. If you can get a match from your employer, always get the free money, no matter what. So beyond that, um, you should probably max out your 401k, which currently is $19,000 a year. Um, so all the money up to $19,000 that you can really save without uh, cutting down on what you need to spend money on, you should just uh, throw into your 401k. And I know that can be kind of difficult because um, it's hard to know month to month or paycheck to paycheck how much you can really um, stand to not get into your bank account. But um, part of that should be mitigated by your uh, emergency fund, so you shouldn't have to dip into your savings in the first place. But beyond that, um, you should... Uh, put all the money that you can into your 401k so that when you finally retire and start getting distributions from your 401k, you don't have to cut down in lifestyle at all. Beyond that, you should be maxing out your Roth IRA and uh, all the money going into your Roth IRA is after tax. So you already paid money on that. It's already going into your uh, bank account. And from there, you can stick it into a Roth IRA, but everything in your Roth IRA is tax-free in retirement. So even if you make a billion dollars in your Roth IRA, um, once you hit 59 and a half and you can start cashing out, all that money is tax-free. So that's an excellent way to invest your money. Honorable mention here is an HSA, which is not a retirement account. It's a health savings account. Um, the current contribution limit is $3,500 per year or $7,000 for um, if you're filing jointly. Um, all the qualifying health costs are tax-free and the money going into the HSA is also tax-free. So HSA is actually the best out of all three of these. Um, it's just that um, the investment choices are fairly limited, as are the ones in the 401k. But if you can, you should probably prefer to get an HSA. Um, not everyone qualifies. You need to have a high deductible health plan to qualify to uh, get an HSA. But if you can get an HSA and um, you can save that money, then that money goes in tax-free and it also comes out tax-free as long as you spend it on health-related expenses, which tend to go up in, um, once you get older. But money going in is tax-free, money coming out is tax-free. It's definitely the best account. So favor that if you have the chance. If your goal is financial independence, then you should probably um, start a non-tax advantaged account which means um, you basically open an individual brokerage account at like Fidelity or Vanguard or Ameritrade or wherever really. Um, at first, probably Robinhood is your best bet. I'll put a link in the description. Um, so financial independence means you kind of want to retire before the retirement age. And for that, you need to save a lot more money than you could with a Roth or a 401k. So. Um, you should um, basically cut down on your spending as much as you can, stick all the money into a brokerage account, and probably stick it into index funds unless you're really sure you know what you're doing. So um, if you're having businesses on the side and you just want to invest some money, 
um, probably invest in an S&P 500 index fund or if you don't mind the risk, and again, that's where the research starts, um, you can invest in the NASDAQ index fund, which grows at a much higher rate, but also has much more risk. So I would recommend if you're a beginner in a stock market, just throw um, all the money that you want to invest in an S&P 500 index fund and just leave it alone. Just add money, invest it in the index fund, leave it alone and um, build your savings up over a long time and then um, an alternative to that and a slight nod to Graham Stephan is real estate. Real estate is a good way to invest money for financial independence and uh, most people will start that when they buy their first home to actually live in because you can um, if you make a good decision to purchase a home, which means um, the home will likely appreciate and it's good value right now, then you're probably going to have a fairly valuable home 20 years down the line. So you can then continue that if you want to invest in real estate to buy rental homes and uh, make money passive income on the side um, I say passive because you still have to manage it you have to deal with tenants you have to deal with the repairs you have to deal with a lot of things so um, again if you don't want to spend a lot of time doing research and all that um, real estate beyond your first home is likely not the way to go but um, it's a after you buy your first home you get uh, comfortable with the whole process of what comes with purchasing a home and all the taxes and uh, insurance and all that that you need to deal with and then um, that becomes a viable vehicle to uh, build your wealth and grow from there so if you're looking for financial independence depending on how much research you want to do uh, index funds are probably your best bet and from there if you want maximum returns obviously you need to hit the like button um, I come out with videos every day about the stock market about personal finance so hit the subscribe if you want more the more of that and then um, you can hit index funds again index funds are a really good investment for most people if you don't want to do all the research into all the individual stocks that you can invest in and all the investment vehicles and all the taxes that come with it and long-term financial gains, uh, short-term financial gains, all that, index funds um, are a really good way to grow your money over time. Um, and beyond that, stock picking. Now again, that's where the research really starts. Um, statistically, obviously, if you invest in a random stock and just leave it alone over, you know, 20, 30 years, um, you will grow that money fairly well, but that is not your best bet for maximum returns. There are very undervalued stocks on the stock market every day of every year. And if you want to spend a lot of time researching all these stocks and what they have going for them, what their growth are, what their balance sheet is, um, what their dividend is, um, what their uh, current earnings are, all that. If you want to do all that research, then stock picking is going to be by far your best bet. So hit the subscribe button if you want more videos like that. Um, I'm posting every day before market open. Have a good day.